What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. It's Wednesday, uh, April 10th. Happy hump day. Got me a great workout in today. Got home, went out, trained some uh, some wrestling, a wrestling team. Back and forth with all my uh, parent Uber responsibilities. Uh, now I'm back home, 6.30, going to do a little work on my uh, my BTY seminar coming up April 30th. Uh, my first kind of real speaking uh, seminar uh, getting into not only nutrition, but also uh, my BTY mentality, how that helps me in every area of my life, not just uh, fitness, but family, career, relationships, and so forth. So uh, tonight's topic, real quick, I'm going to talk about uh, being average, right? And, 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 and the necessity to create an environment around you with people who don't want you to be average, right? So I just, I just took my daughter... Uh, her water. She's trying out for uh, for dance team again at her high school, trying to be captain, I believe, this year. So um, she forgot her water. So like a good dad, like a good teammate, I took her water to her. So I dropped it off. I almost did a little dance while I was in there, show these girls what I got. Um, but I didn't, I didn't embarrass her. Uh, but as I was driving off, I thought back, back to two years ago when she first tried out for the dance team and uh, how nervous she was and how afraid she was and how nervous I was as a parent that she would not make it. You know, one of my biggest fears and one of my biggest uh, worries as a parent is disappointment that my kids have to go through and my wife and my friends, um, things that I can't take away, pain uh, that I can't remove. So I remember the frustration and the fear and anxiety that I felt for her making the team. What's up, Corey? Hey, Amy. So um, I was thinking as I drove off, I was thinking, I wonder if she, uh, what's up, Rashawn? I wonder if she misses that feeling of being nervous, right? Because she's a, she's a great dancer. She's very talented. She's probably going to make the team. She's probably going to be team captain. What's up, Greg? Um, but I wonder if she misses not knowing if she's going to make the team, right? So when you're an athlete, like, like Greg, like, 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 like I was like you, you embrace tough games. Like you, you like going into games where the, the outcome is in doubt, right? Going into a game when you know you're going to win is not fun. When you face an opponent that's worthy of the battle, that's fun. It's, it, it's, it, it provokes anxiety. It provokes fear sometimes. But as a competitor in life, you embrace those things. So I was, I was thinking, I wonder if she, misses, if she misses that, if she misses being nervous about trying out. And I'm going to ask her when she gets home, and I'm hopeful she'll say the right answer. The right answer is she should miss it. The right answer is we, is we should all miss that. We should all miss... Uh, interviewing for a job. We should all miss that first date or that first date excitement you have with your with your girlfriend or boyfriend. We should all miss a big test that we studied for. We should, we should all miss the feeling you get when you go into a big game. We should all miss that regularly. And if we don't miss that, if you don't miss that, that's because we have settled for where we are in life, right? And we have become average. And, and, and more importantly, okay with being average, right? So if you have not felt anxiety or some stress or some, uh, some sense of, 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 of doubt in your life, in your career, in your relationships, and in your fitness, whatever it is, then you are probably at a place where you're just being comfortable, right? And I want to help you guys understand that we're not meant to be comfortable, Right, our our brains and our and and our, and our our hormones are wired to respond to stuff, to respond to danger, to respond to fear, to respond to to trouble, to respond to all those things. Our brains are designed for that for survival mechanisms. So when you don't do that regularly, you begin to have some some cognitive dissonance. Your body does not know how to act. That's why we respond and we, and we and we turn to self medication. We we return to food. We turn to 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 binge watching. We turn to all these things to numb 
what we are missing out on. And that is a natural inclination, a natural draw to be pushed, a natural draw to be anxious, a natural draw to be stretched. So if you don't feel that, guys, then you're missing out on a big part of who you are as a human being, right? So the question is, and we all go through it. Many of us go through it. Many of us are at a point in our lives, at our careers, in our relationships, with our kids, with our spouses, with our fitness, where we're just comfortable, right? We're just going through the week to get to Friday. We're just going through the month to get through the next holiday, the next day off, right? Going through the months to get to our birthday, going through the months to get to New Year's Day, all these things. And, and we're letting the calendar just go by and never really pushing ourselves to a point where we are getting better and growing and learning and doing what our brains and our bodies and our hormones were meant to do, right? So, so the problem is we are surrounded by most people in our lives that are just like that, right? That are okay being average. And I don't mean average in a bad way. I mean average being content, right? And being, and being what they think is happy. I would argue that if you're not pushing yourselves and getting every bit of, of, of talent, of drive, of, of, of ability out of who you are, then you're not really deep down happy. You can't be, right? If you were designed to be, to be on the freeway as a Porsche doing 110 and you're stuck in a, in a field plowing stuff, then you can't be happy if you're built for something that you're not doing. Right. So the problem is most of America, most of the world really is content with where they are. And I don't care where you are. If you're fit and strong, if you're if you're rich, you can still be content. So it's not a matter of, of absolutes in terms of health and fitness, in terms of uh, financial success or career. It's in terms of where you were and where you're going and where you are currently. Right. So if you're not moving on this spectrum of, of good to great, then you can't be happy, really, right? If your relationship with your spouse hasn't gotten any better in 20 years and has become stagnant, you can't really be happy, right, BC? You might be content. You might not be, you might not be upset about it or sad about it or depressed about it, but if you ain't, ain't joyful, then you can't really be happy. And that's, that's really the worst place you can be in life is to be okay with things. Right. Not bad enough to change it, but not great enough to feel great about it, to be happy about it, to get out of bed in the morning, excited to face the day about it. Right. So most of us are kind of stuck in that middle. Right. Not miserable enough to change it. Right. I told a story about the dog who's lying on the nail and groaning. Right. And somebody passes by a few times every day and they hear this dog groaning. And he finally asked the damn, the damn owner of the dog, why is your dog groaning? And the owner says, well, he's groaning because he's lying on a nail. And then, the, and then the person walking by says, why don't he get up and move from the damn nail? And the owner says, well, it don't hurt bad enough. Right. So most of us are, are like that dog on the nail where we don't feel great, but it don't hurt bad enough to change. And so the problem is everybody is in our circle is kind of in the same boat, right? So when we do meet up with them, when we do sit with them, when we do talk to them, they're experiencing the same thing we're experiencing, average, average. And so the problem is, is if you have too many people around you who are okay being average, they don't push you to move beyond average, right? So if everybody in your life is okay where they are financially, is okay where they are physically, is okay where they are in the relationships, then guess what? You are going to be okay physically. You are going to be okay financially. You are going to be okay in your relationships, right? But if you have somebody around you who's trying to be better physically, who's trying to be better in their relationships with their husband and wife and children, right? Who's trying to be better, right, in their career, trying to learn every day, trying to grow, trying to get more money, trying to get a new house, trying to build, right? Trying to build wealth, right? If you have people like that around you, guess what? You act differently, right? Or you remove yourself from them, which is even, it was just sadder, right? Because they make you uncomfortable. So I'm asking you guys to do one thing, right? Today, go home, 
or, or, or after this after this video, I want you to sit down and I want you to list the 10 people you spend mo your most time with. Everybody, your spouse, your children, your coworkers, your friends, the 10 people, maybe Coach Bobby, the 10 people you spend most of your time with. And you tell me where they were at a year ago, right? In their health, right? In their relationships, right? In their, in their, in their career, and, and what they're trying to do in their lives before they go, go to heaven and leave this earth, right? You write down 10 people you spend your most time with and where they were at a year ago. If that hasn't changed much, right, then I, then I promise you, you haven't changed much in those same areas. So then you have to say, you know what, now, now that I know that, don't get rid of them, still love them, but I want you to become somebody in their circle who's pushing to be healthier, to be fitter, who's pushing to have more wealth, to have more money, to have a better house, who's pushing to be a better father, a better husband, a better friend, right? You be the person of their 10 that's pushing, right? And then you got to go out and find somebody. Go out and find somebody to, to add to your list and start spending more time with them. Maybe it's a book. Maybe it's just somebody you follow on YouTube. Maybe it's somebody in real life. Maybe it's Coach Bobby, right? Find somebody who you think in, in one or two areas is trying to be better, right? And listen to them, talk to them, read about them, follow them. Because if you don't, you're going to spend the next year being average and the next two years being average. And you'll look back 10 years from now and you'll say, I spent 10 years thinking about getting in better shape. And I'm still here. I spent 10 years thinking about starting that business or thinking about going back to school or thinking about asking for a promotion. And I'm still here. Or I spent 10 years trying to figure out how to be a better father to my kids, how to be more involved with them, right? How to, how to, how to be a better husband or a better wife. And I'm still here, right? If you don't surround yourself with people, there's no draw, there's no pull to get better. Right? Because we won't do it ourselves because too many people around us are pulling us the other way. So I have people around me who, who almost make me nervous how great they want to be. Right? I have people here, right? I won't, I won't mention names because they'll be embarrassed, who I look at their lives and I think I want to be better. I want to make more money. I want to be a better father. I want to I speak better. I want to grow in my relationships. I want to be smarter. I want to talk, whatever it is, right? I have people in, in the Prove It community where I buy my ketones who are doing great in business, who I follow. I have a guy I'm going down to see next month, Bo Eason, right, who's a speaking juggernaut. Right? I'm going to go train with him for three days to get better. This guy's awesome. He scares me, right? People in my, in my boot camp who are making millions of dollars, who come down the hill to train with me from, from huge houses, who inspire me to be better every single day, right? My kids push me to be better. My kids expect me to be better. My wife needs me to be better, right? So everybody around me, right, is not only, even, even the ones who are, who are kind of average, they expect me to be better than average, right? So they push me, right? They expect me to lead them. Right? So if you don't have that, if you don't have people around you who are wanting to be better than average, who are wanting to be better than yesterday, and worse off, aren't, are not expecting you to be better than yesterday, that's even worse. Right? So you have an assignment, guys. Write down the 10 people you spend most of your time with. You can still love them. Right, but it, but it, but if an autopsy of those people shows that ten of them have not gotten better in the areas you hold important in the last year, then you're probably not getting better either. So what you, so that's step one. Step two is I, I need you to start being one of the ten in their group, in their ten that leads them. Right, that that inspires your children to be better, that inspires your spouse to be better, that inspires your friends to be better. Right, and then begin to seek out and find people who are trying to be 
above the average line in whatever areas you want to be better at, financially, physically, spiritually, relationship-wise. Go find them. They're out there, right? Go find them. Read books. Watch YouTube, right? Find people to talk to around you. Right? Somebody at your job doing well, talk to them. Buy them lunch. Buy your boss lunch. Right? Somebody you know who's really fit, buy her lunch. Talk to her. Send her an email or him an email. Ask them how they did it. Ask them to hold you accountable. Right? But, but we, can't, we can't keep going along this treadmill of average, right? And we can't be okay with that. There's areas in my life where I look back last year, I'm the same person. Right? But I don't want to stay the same person. So I look at it objectively. I do an autopsy on it. Right? And I say, you know what? I need to find somebody who speaks better than me. I need to find somebody who runs a business better than me, right? And spend more time with those. Is it scary? It's very scary because it makes you feel like this. No one likes feeling like they're not doing well. That's why we surround ourselves with people who are at our level or below us, right? Nobody wants to feel inferior. The problem is we can't grow that way. We can't grow around people who are at where we're at and don't want us to be better. Not in a bad way. They're just, they're just okay with you where you're at. They've, they've adapted you in your current state. So they don't want you to grow. They don't want, not in a bad way. They don't want you to grow because it makes them uncomfortable. Right? So we're not trying to replace them. We're trying to lead them and we're trying to add to our mix of people in our lives to help us be better. So, you know, be honest with yourselves, guys. In the last year, have you grown? Have you gotten better physically and health-wise? Have you gotten better in your career? Have you gotten better in your relationships? And if not, we, we're not, unless something's wrong with us, right? Then we're okay being average. Right. I, I had to accept, you know, for them, for, you know, for whatever reason, subconsciously, I was OK being average at my business. I was OK being average at public speaking. Why? Because I'm still here. If I want to be great like I do now, I would have sought people who are great. And I would have been OK being uncomfortable sometimes like I am now doing videos in order to be great. So. For the last, you know, two, five, ten years, I've been okay. People around me who like pat my back and say, you're doing great. Keep it up. Stay where you're at. Right. But not being scared, not being pushed. Right. So we need to be nervous. We need to be stressed. We need to be anxious sometimes. That's proof that we're pushing ourselves to be better. And I'm hoping my daughter, when she gets home, when I ask her, don't you miss being a little nervous during tryouts, not knowing you're going to make the team? Don't you miss that? She better say yes. If she a blue for it, she better say yes. Because we're wired to do that. We're wired to push. We're wired to get better. Not just blue for it, all of us. And so when we don't do that, a part of us dies. So three assignments, guys. Ten people. You spend most time with, right? And then figure out if, they're, if they've gotten better in the last year in the areas you, you deem important, right? That's step one. Step two, I need you to start being a leader in your group. Be the person who begins studying. Be the person who brings up a book that you're reading to your group, to your friends. Be the person who talks about financial awareness. Be the person who starts exercising Right? And encourages them to exercise. Be that person in your group. Be that person to them. Right? And then begin to add to your circle of influences, of people to push you and drive you and motivate you in physical, in health, in spirituality, in relationships, in your career, in finances. Find somebody, whoever, online, YouTube, whatever. Coach Bobby, you know, if you want me, want me to be that, that accountability person for you, I'm more than happy to do that for you. Okay, so let's do that. Ten people, right? Do an autopsy and figure out where they, you know, where they at, where they're at, you know, you know, where where, the, where were they, where were they at a year ago, 
right? Do, do be objective, right? Be honest, right? That's step one, step two, make sure that you become somebody that's influential to them and then begin to add to your circle, all right? But we got to stop being average, guys, right? And we got to stop being okay with being average, right? We're all average in some places of our lives. All of us have been the same person we are today in some area of our life for years, right? So in that area, we're okay being average, right? If we're not okay being average in that area anymore, we need to change it, right? And we can change it, all right? But we got to start with, with not being okay being average. All right, guys. I love you guys. Have a good day. Um, let's say Wednesday. I'll probably check back tomorrow or Friday. But, you know, every day, guys, get better. Grind. Push. You know, we're on this earth for this long. For this long. Right? Make a difference. Right? Make every day count. Every day we're trying to be better than yesterday. All right, guys. Love you. Bye-bye.